it's intended to be an acoustic work. Therefore, all of the uh, things that are hanging here are here solely in order to provide as many reflective surfaces as possible, in order to break up the shape of the room to cut down on the reflection of sound. And therefore, it didn't really matter what it looked like, um, although it has ended up looking rather interesting. The shape of the room was also broken up by spanning corners and by following odd shapes, again, in order to provide a uh, completely um, irregular surface for the sound. And it does produce a different acoustic sensation when you're in here than it did before, considering that it's all hard surfaces, a hard stone floor, and even with the wood walls, they, they're very flat and they tend to reflect the sound. you do when you're doing um, archery. You don't shoot at the target. You shoot so that you land on the target. I was trying to be a little more obvious about listening. And I had seen that illustration of um, when the, in the early days of stethoscopes and the use of the stethoscope in medicine when medical students were trained by listening with a group stethoscope with the teaching professor and they all had listening to the same receiver on the patient and I just thought it was a very amusing kind of thing especially because everyone thinks that sharing headphones these days is, is um, so avant-garde but actually it started back in the days of radio when people had to actually use headsets to listen to the radio and there would be group headsets and there would be quiet and silence because everyone was listening to the same radio program.
really like about this work is the way it is the antithesis of the white cube, where extraneous sound and light have to be excluded, anything that might interfere with the piece. This work is completely dependent on the real world seeping into this space, into this tiny room, people, birds, the water, focusing everyone's attention, hopefully, on the sounds. And originally, the intent was to make this a sound piece, but by using this fabric that has created this amazing diffuse light, it seems as if it allows people to just sit here very quietly and become aware of the sounds that are around them because there's such a diffuseness in front of them. I think the best part is that when Francis came up here and sat for much more than the five minutes that he thought he would, he came down and he quoted from Shelley. And what he said was, life, like a dome of many colored glass, stains the white radiance of eternity. And for me, that was actually perfect. Obviously, Sex Mundum, Cambridge, Cambridge, Cambridge. Norwich, um, East London, next door. Okay. <laughs> oh, hang on, that's the one I want. Oh, that's the one I want. Oh, that's so just, just give us a tip. Surrealist happening, yeah. <laughs> just communing with nature and sitting on the beach and looking at the sunset. It has been work from day afternoon one. And, just, um, and then in the, for the daring ones, there is a tactical vertical ladder going up to the room that was occupied by Florence, Florence Vanderpuss. So I am so thrilled and flattered that everyone has come to see this wonderful place. Uh, well, thank so, you for having us. Carry on. <laughs> I just like to say that this is the kind of event that other people read about in magazines. <laughs> this, is, this is a magazine? No, no. This is life. This is life, and this is us doing the thing that we feel is important. <laughs> Oh,